welcome to day two, our third teaching series in this class. And we are going to be considering a topic, <laughs> assignment and suffering. Somebody's mm. like, what? Wow. Purpose and suffering. The subtopic is why do people suffer even when they are not doing their purpose or when they are doing their purpose? Why is there so much suffering in life? When you read Acts chapter 9, 15 to 16, and <laughs> the call of Paul, Jesus said, I'm going to show him how much he's going to suffer. And you're like, what, what kind of a calling is that? What kind of, a, how, is that a good way to call somebody? Is that what you tell somebody when you call him? But I came to realize that with the Lord, he will not lie to you. He does not lie. He doesn't know how to lie. Mm. Those of us that have read the back of the book, you saw that Paul suffered. What if Jesus told him, I'm calling it for enjoyment? <laughs> he would have run away because he didn't get the full picture from the beginning. That's a good introduction, right? Let's dig into the word. Mm. Father, thank you. Thank mm. you for your word. Mm. The entrance of your word will always bring understanding. Amen. And it will bring understanding to the simple. I Amen. pray that our hearts will be simple this morning. Amen. That there will be no high-mindedness, complicated hearts Amen. under the sound of my voice. That everyone will hear clearly as you speak to us. Amen. That no one will hear wrong. Everyone Amen. will hear right. And our lives will be transformed forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Purpose and suffering or assignment and suffering. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse um, 3 and 5 to 5. It's a weeping. No, no, no. That's not the one. That one says, endure hardship as a soldier of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> you say endure hardship as a soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, this is the thing. A lot of people are not prepared for the S. A lot of people live their life superficially. That's why they don't make, they don't do exploit. Because when the least mm. thing hits, they disappear. Like what? When when water meets the salt, it, it, it evaporates. Children of God, child of God, you were created to take some level of pain. You were created to stand and do your assignment regardless of what the enemy is doing. I'm glad I'm the one teaching this. So you know I'm not telling you theory. Many of you believe in me. You know I teach how God is good. But please permit me to tell you the entire picture. This is supposed to support teaching his mentee. And that's what I'm doing this morning. He says, endure hardship as a soldier of Jesus Christ. You know why a lot of people don't make exploits because they leave temptation, they disappear. Mm. You cannot do your assignment completely, fully on planet Earth without something trying to stand in the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. What do you do? You endure. We're not talking about the devil only. We're talking about real challenges that we'll see. Thank you, Lord. Number two, we saw the scripture, Psalm 30, verse 5. It's a weeping will endure to the night. There's going to be a time in your assignment when it's not going to be easy. But do you see the assurance? Joy will come in the morning. Why is there suffering when I'm doing purpose? Why is there suffering in the world when you're not doing purpose and when you're doing purpose? Because that's the nature and the terrain of the place where you are. The Bible says the habitation of the earth is inhabited by cruelty, by wickedness. A lot of us are chosen by the Lord, but we are running away. And because you're running away, you're getting into pain, into deeper levels of pain. I'm almost tempted to give you my conclusion. But let's, let's write this book together. I wrote down, I think in Galatians 1.15, Paul was chosen before his birth. But do you realize what he was doing from the beginning? 
It wasn't close to what he was called to do. You can be chosen and you choose to go your own way and do your own thing. And guess what will happen? You will live a painful life. The first reason why there is pain in suffering is that there's pain or suffering when you do your purpose or when you're on earth. You're not doing your purpose or you're doing your purpose, there's going to be a level of suffering. It's because, number one, there is something called the dark years of life. When you begin to live life without God, we're talking about those who are in suffering or pain because they don't know their purpose, right? That's the first part we want to look at. When you are in those years, I don't care how many trillion you have in the bank, nothing satisfies. Nothing truly can satisfy any human being on earth, but when they do their assignment. That's the truth. Believe me when I tell you that. For those that are in this category, the only solution is to do your purpose. And you're like, wait, Mama Emma, you said when we do purpose, we'll still suffer. You see the difference, shortly. And there's a difference between the pain you get when you're out of purpose and the pain that you go through when you're in your purpose. You see, I already told you the conclusion, which I didn't want to tell you from the beginning. Number two, why is there pain and suffering on earth? Because we live a fake life. People want to be accepted by everybody. Do you realize that the formula for suffering and pain is living a life that you want everybody to like you and to accept you? If you're doing purpose and you're looking for everybody to accept your purpose, accept everything you're doing, you're going to be suffering because you're going to live a life of rejection. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, not everybody will accept your purpose. Mm -hmm. For those who are not even doing purpose, rejection is your last name. You know it. Because there's nobody that will favor you out of purpose. Oops. You're crying for favor. Oh, God, favor me. Favor you to do what? Oh, Father, send divine help us to help you do what? So I wrote down, I said, the reason we have a lot of suffering in the world is the need for acceptance. Everybody is wanting everybody to accept them. Can I tell us the truth? You've been accepted by the one that created you. He accepted you before he even sent you. He saw that you are a champion. He saw that you are a warrior. He, he put something in us that proof us. Failure proof before he sent us into the world. I'm telling you the truth. There's something I call the rejection test. Every human being must pass the rejection test to hmm. be able to enjoy life on earth. Mm -hmm. You must come to a place where it don't matter who accepts or rejects you. As long as God is for you and with you, you're fine. When you can accept that, then you will reduce your suffering. Why is there so much suffering? You know, when you're doing assignment or you're not doing it, because we want to be accepted, a need for acceptance. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I beg you, pass the rejection test. Get to a point in life where it doesn't matter who is with and for you. You're going to do God's will regardless. Then you pass the rejection test. Why is there so much suffering even when you're not doing your purpose and when you're doing your purpose? Now we want to step into the kind of suffering that people experience when they're doing their purpose, right? Oh no, let's give one more before purpose. Every human being is the target of the devil. I'm telling you the truth. Because he was promised in the garden at the fall that the seed of man will crush his head. If you are a human being, have you ever asked the question, what did I do? How did I get into this trouble again? Oh, the only reason is because you have flesh and bone. <laughs> That's the truth. As long as you're born on earth, you are a candidate and target for the devil. That's why there's suffering and pain. 
Now, those who are born again, hey, you know your purpose. You are his bigger target. But this is the good news. He cannot kill you when you're doing your purpose. Oh, I love that. Even if you're muted, chat, put in the chat box, amen. He cannot kill you. Please remember this. No matter the level of pain, you cannot die anyhow doing your purpose. Number four, why do people suffer even when they are in purpose? Wrong location. There are many of us doing purpose. You're supposed to be doing royal evangelism, like my daughter favor, and you decide to live in the city. Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 17 to 21, said it clearly. The Lord called him to the Gentiles. Guess what? He wanted to be with the big guys in Jerusalem. And then he suffered. Knowing your purpose is amazing. But knowing the location of your purpose is even more critical. Because you will not be accepted in every area. We saw that during the December conference, we look at the law of territory. There is plenty of suffering in a job that was not destined for you. Yes, you were called. God has assigned you to be an amazing banker for our generation. But where is your bank? Is it in Nigeria? Is it in Yaoundé? Is it in Douala? A lot of people think that the solution to their problem is to maybe what they call in Nigeria, Japa, you, you fall bush, Cameroonians. No, you can fall all the bush you want. If you don't do your purpose, you have money, but you still be very miserable. Number five, why do people suffer even though they are doing their purpose? Number five, divine timing. They are out of divine timing. A lot of people are on the other side of the spectrum. They are late. Almost all of you under the sound of my voice, you are either late or you're slow. God is saying, let's go. You say, wait, I need five more thousand million dollars in my account. And God says, no, I don't need money to do purpose. I need you. Out of divine timing, if God is saying we're going right, remember the vision? I tell the woman, the woman kept leading until she listened and we turned around and we, we were in life. There's only one human being in history that was faster than God as far as purpose was concerned. That was Moses. And even in that, he still suffered. So you, you see that people, you say, why am I doing my purpose, but I'm still suffering? Check the time. Check the location. Number six, why is it that you can be in purpose and still suffer? I want us to look at this because we're looking at assignment, purpose, or predestination, preordination. I defined all of this yesterday. I know Papa Scott will load the messages so you can hear them again for yourself. Every time you hear the word, um, my assignment, it means your purpose. It means your predestination or your preordination. Or God's intended plan for your life. It's the same thing. So why is it that you can be doing it and you still experience a level of suffering? Refuse that to be trained. You can be called as the best apostle, but you don't know what comes against the apostolic structure. I was talking to a friend, um, actually a son in the ministry, and he told me something. He said, this is what we're doing, and this is what is going on. I said, do you realize that you carry the apostolic grace? And he said, um, I said, it is not something that you like. When you're born, your, your assignment is determined even before you were born. You see, um, we saw that with the creation. Everything that was created in Genesis, their assignment was determined even before they were created. Man the gold, the everything, even the sun and the moon, the assignment was determined before they were created. And we came to Papa Jeremiah, we saw the same thing. Even before he was formed, his assignment was destined. Yesterday, studying last night, you see that before Paul the apostle was born, his assignment was determined. I told my son, I said, 
Those problems you just told me are the problems that go along with the apostolic ministry. He said, what are you talking about, mom? I said, listen to me. This is what the apostolic ministry looks like. And I send him back to the book of Acts. I said, study Acts chapter 3, 4, 5, and 6. The apostolic ministry is a very fast-growing ministry, but food is going to be a problem. And he laughs. He said, mom, that is weird. I said, that's the truth. He was not trained. He's not trained to, to walk the shoes of the apostolic. So he was suffering and he was in, in distress because he did not understand those things. But when we spoke and I showed him, he went and studied, and now he used the same approach that the apostles used. Everything is calm. So why do we suffer even though we are in our purpose? We refuse us to be trained. I wrote down, I said, follow the process. Follow the process. You will reduce the pain. Like I said, the pain of those who are not serving God is the pain because they are on earth. But the pain of those who are serving God is a different kind of pain. This pain is a pain with rewards. My goodness. Let's go to number seven before I begin to conclude. Number seven. Why do we go through pain even though we are serving God? Comparison. Comparison. When you begin to compare yourself, compare your assignment with another person, you will suffer unnecessary sleepless night because you want to be like somebody else. You see that in the book of Acts, chapter 22, 17 to 21, Apostle Paul wanted to stay in Jerusalem. He wanted to be where it was happening. And he suffered until he himself realized. How did he get to realize? Because Jesus appeared to him and said, leave this place. Nobody will listen to you. The suffering was a lot and he had to leave. So how do we leave our purpose to the point where we minimize the pain and the suffering? Stop comparing yourself. Is it to or with others? You can also read Galatians 1.10. You see it there. Number eight. Why is it that you can be in your purpose and you're still suffering? Oh, I love this one. This is my best. Doing your purpose in your strength. <laughs> you know, I'm an evangelist. I've been doing this for many years. Oh you're about to enter into a big big trap if there's one thing I want us to leave this fast with is that your assignment is given to you by a loving father he did not give you this assignment so you can do it in your own strength I can give you time and time again when I'm going to minister and I'm like daddy you didn't say anything he said because we are coming with you Wait, there are times I remember if the Scots remember, they would tell you there was a particular when daddy started training me to depend on him. Listen, I study, so don't get this wrong. I pray, I do my own part. I'm always studying by the grace of God. So I'm not talking about laziness here. I took even a retreat for this particular conference. I think it's a June conference this year, 2022. Should be the June conference. I took a retreat. I, I got what he wanted us to say and some things. And two, three days before the conference, I asked them, I was out here eating and rejoicing. And they look at me. I could see in their tone of eyes like, wait, Mama, we usually don't see you two, three days before conference. What are you doing? And I had to tell them. I said, I know what. Daddy has given me what I'm talking about. He's already laid out everything. And he told me, you're good to go. You see, the best life you can live is a dependent life on the Lord, on the Holy Spirit. Your assignment was given to you to live with the Holy Spirit. He makes it easy. Or let's say easier. So there's always going to be your participation. Doing it in your strength, approaching your assignment in your brain, in your strength, in your know-how is why we suffer. 
Can I remind us that there's nothing like my purpose? It is God's purpose for you. Ah, if you missed that one, you've missed a big thing this morning. So how can God give you his purpose and now you want to live it all by yourself without him? Oh no, you will suffer. That's the truth. You can reduce that suffering by depending on him. Paul was speaking in Galatians 1. 1 to 2. He said, God separated me from my mother's womb to be an apostle. Wait. So it was not Paul's intention. It was not his decision. He's not the one that decided. God decided. Can I remind us that the purpose that is over your life, the assignment that was given to you before you came to planet Earth was given to you by the Father and he is super, super responsible. He is super available to help. If you lean on him, ah, you enjoy this assignment. Even when the persecution will come, even when the distractions will come, because that's a real suffering for a child of God that is walking the assignment with the Lord. The, the bigger thing is persecution. And one man of God said, Pessy and cute. Persecution is not sweet. Why are you focusing on it? That's the suffering we get when others are cruel and say mean things about us. And so what? Yes, it's a kind of suffering, but the truth is I would rather do purpose and be persecuted than to be purposeless. That was point number eight. Why do people suffer even though they are doing their purpose? Because you want to do it in your strength. You're tired. I can tell you so many times I've been studying. I'm tired. And I'm in the office. I don't even want to go sleep on my bed. And the Holy Ghost said, go to bed. I said, let me finish. He said, no, go to bed. <laughs> I know you all don't do that, right? It's only Mama Ima that's weird. You're mentoring somebody and they're not responding. The Holy Ghost, they leave them alone. He said, I will do it again. I see if you can change anybody. Mm, I just have somebody now. You have very bad, stubborn friends. They are not ready for the gospel. Instead of you focusing on building yourself and asking God to bring the people that are ready, you want to be Jehovah El Shaddai over them. And they are not moving. Ah, we'll visit your own case. Doing it in your strength. The young guy said, God, you know what? I really know that uh, if I have to do my assignment, I need to be married. But these men, they are slow in coming. So I'll just catch one and convert them. Mercy. You're in trouble. You're adding to your pain. Because you cannot change anybody. Only the power of God. Reduce your suffering by depending on the Lord. You know, nowadays we, now I pray, so don't get this wrong. I we even have a prayer school in this ministry. We're teaching ourselves, teaching others how to pray, reminding ourselves of the necessity of prayer. But can I tell you, you pray to, it is God that gives you strength to pray. It is the same God that will answer your prayers. Wait, so in the equation, where is your own ability? Complete dependence on him to pray. Complete dependence on him to answer. We must have now come to the understanding that even to be a wife, to be a parent, to be the CEO that you are, you can't do it in your strength. I'm belaboring this point because I told you all oh, this is my best. I have over the years gotten in trouble because I want to do things in my strength. I know many of you that are called. I know many of you here are ministry leaders. You're doing great things in the kingdom. If you check your life, the most suffering you've experienced is when you wanted to do things in your own power. That's why I'm staying on it a little bit. Can we reduce this suffering, unnecessary pain in 2023 by depending on him? Letting him be our strength that will approach every kingdom assignment from a humble place of Father, help me again. Father, teach me again. Lord, lead me again. Not that I've done BBI for five years so I can teach any cloud. No! 
thousand times no. I still spend hours in prayers before I teach. Been teaching BBI for five years. This is the sick batch. Oh, you think I would just get up and say, ah, I, this is my notes. No, I update my notes yearly. Anybody who knows will tell you. Why? Because he owns the school. Whatever he wants to add is what we're adding. Whatever he wants to take out is we take it out. He knows the students more than I do. You see, I've stayed on this point because I really want us to leave, especially this session, with the focus of, I have to alleviate the pain of my assignment. I have to reduce the craziness that can come with serving God. By what? Not doing it in your own strength. Not approaching it by your brain. I said, after all, it is God's assignment. It's not your own. The number nine, why do we have pain? Why do we go through pain as we serve the Lord? I know this point will sound like number two, but it's not the same. Number two says the need for acceptance. But number nine says man-pleasing. Mm, mm, mm. You don't understand. It, when you are called and you accept your call, let me tell you one of the biggest challenges you go through, people's opinion. People will tell you all kinds of things. People will want to lead you to their own path. But the question is, whose assignment are you doing? Whose purpose are you doing? Who predestined you? That your friend, your uncle? No. Man-pleasing will cause you to suffer because you begin to do what they want. And can I tell you the nature of man? They will leave you. You don't believe me? Oh, they will leave you. Man has the right to be there. And they have the choice not to be there. The question is, if you depend on man, what is the assurance that they will be there when you really need them? I've come to realize that in ministry or when you begin to do your purpose, people will be there when they want. Believe me. The only one that will be there when you need him the most is the father. So the conclusion and the solution to this man pleasing is don't please man, serve God. Can I tell you a secret? When you truly serve God, you'll be pleasing to man. You see the difference? Man pleasing, pleasing to man. You want to be pleasing to man, but you don't want to be man pleasing. These are two different things. Man pleasing is when you leave so people can clap for you. But pleasing to man is when you're serving God and doing your assignment and people look at you and they're like, man, I want to be like this woman. You're pleasing to them. Please leave to be pleasing to man and not man pleasing. Galatians 1, you read 10, you hear Paul's daily more. You read 10 to 15, especially verse 12, you hear him crying about this situation. It's important for us to know that when you begin to do your purpose, you might be tempted to be a man pleaser. Don't do it. But if you do it, you increase your pain. I'm concluding. I wrote down, I said, pain before your assignment and pain during your assignment are completely different. You see, this is a conclusion I wanted to give you from the beginning because I felt like, yeah, I know the topic is a deep one. So when I introduced it, you might have been like, my God, but my Emma, I've never heard you teach anything like that. I feel I felt weird when I heard the teaching topic for this morning myself. We you know I walk here, so I only do what I'm instructed to do. There are benefits when you serve God, even, 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 even when there is some suffering. I would rather serve God and go through persecution and get the benefits and the reward than fold my hands and say, ah, I don't want to go through that. Let's be honest. If you don't serve God, there is suffering. If you serve God, there's going to be some suffering, but this suffering comes with reward. So I'd rather take reward. Number two, Remember I said there's a difference? I'm giving you the differences now. Number two, the only 
place you are sure of your protection is in your assignment and your purpose. So regardless of the pain you will go through in your assignment, regardless of the challenges you go through in serving God, you are protected. I said it a while ago, the enemy cannot kill you in your assignment. That's the truth. Even if there will be some suffering, you are protected. Premature death will never be associated with you when you serve God and you are in your assignment. The next difference is fulfilled men. Chai, this one you can't buy with money. Even though there will be some pain, some challenges, as you serve God, you'll be fulfilled. Every night when you go to bed, you will sleep because you've done the reason for which you were created. No matter what will be going on, no matter the suffering, the persecution around, you will go to bed and you will sleep well. The suffering of those who don't serve God or they are not doing their purpose is tremendous. There's no fulfillment. There's no rest. Another benefit, advantage, despite the pain, is that, that's number four, is that you are building people. You know your assignment is attached to somebody's destiny. When you're doing your assignment, even though there'll be challenges, in the midst of all the challenges, somebody's life will be built. Somebody's destiny will be changed. And that is better than sitting down without doing your assignment. The last but not the least, it is impossible to be in your purpose and not add value. Ah, I know you thought I say add value to people. No. The first person who benefits, let's be honest and tell the whole truth. The first person who benefits the most when you step into your assignment is you. If you were not taking down note, write that one. Write it in the chat box. The first person that benefits and that will benefit, that will benefit the most when you do your assignment is you. Believe me when I tell you that. You see, all the advantages we've said, you're the first beneficiary. You add value to yourself. You have greater weight before God and humanity, mankind, when you do your assignment. Hey, people don't like me. People don't value me. Question, what are you adding? Mm, I know you like that one. What are you adding? Every time you add value, value will be added to you. Every time you value who you are by doing your purpose, people will value you and will add value to you. Regardless of what you're doing, if it's what the Lord has called you to do for that season and you're doing it well, I promise you, you add value and you will be valued. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. Even as we have heard, I pray for the strength never to give up, regardless of the challenges of assignment, regardless of the challenges that will come when we do our purpose. Lord, you have predestined every one of us to do a specific assignment in our generation, to be a blessing to our dispensation, to be trailblazers in our families, in our community. I pray in the name of Jesus, the same God that has helped me, that he will help you in the name of Jesus. I have never been this courage doing God's will for my life. The same grace that I've received, I release upon you right now in the name of Jesus that no matter what the enemy throws at us, we will overcome, we will go through the wars, we will run through the troops and we'll make it to the end. In the name of Jesus, according to the prophetic word and the prophetic uh, um, revelation that came this night for this um, service, 
I decree and I declare that your morning season has come. Darkness is gone. Pain is gone. In the name of Jesus, that the fear of serving God is gone. The discouragement to serve God because you thought the suffering was from the devil is gone. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that you'll be strengthened in your inner mind by the Spirit of God, that you will not be discouraged again one more day of your life. You will arise and you will do exploit in the name of Jesus because you know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. I decree and I declare that from today, be the light of the world that you are. I bind the spirit of smallness. I bind the spirit spirit of distraction. I bind the spirit of comparison. I bind the spirit of lukewarmness. I decree and I declare that from today you will please God and you'll be pleasing to man in the name of Jesus. Father, empower everyone under the sound of my voice to pass the rejection test in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that your need for acceptance dies now in the name of Jesus, that you will look up to the Lord and you will not be afraid. But I thank you because the devil cannot kill anyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus the grace to locate our locations. Let it be released in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to do that which we need to do in time and in every season, that none of us will run faster than you. In the name of Jesus, give us the grace to discipline ourselves and be trained, Lord, to be humble enough to be trained. In the name of Jesus, our Find the spirit of comparison. I decree and I declare everyone under the sound of my voice that we will run in our lane. We will be focused, we'll be diligent. No excuses in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for the spirit of humility that will be humble enough to depend on you, no matter how intelligent we are, no matter how many times we have done it. Shalama konda raba ante riba ozia lekabozi kadanda rama ante lebo ovre kitala bakata zetando e imene inko jala. There's somebody under my the sound of my voice. The Father said to tell you, drop the weapons, drop the weapons. Drop the weapons. You are planning to do something you know in your heart you should not do. I saw it like in a vision. Somebody has hurt you and you were planning to revenge. You were planning to tell them, like we say, a piece of your mind. The father said, drop the weapons, drop the weapons. You were planning to revenge. The father said, do not revenge. I am your avenger. Yes, you couldn't understand why they did it or they said it. I see that there was a disagreement and you're planning to say your own part. The father said, drop the weapons. Don't explain it. Run your race and leave them for me. I will handle them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, receiving strength, oh God, to stay in the race in the name of Jesus. I thank you because the pain that was unbearable is now leaving the body of somebody you came with an unbearable pain to prayer that pain is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus you might be close to somebody you might be listening to me and you're maybe you're in the hospital you're with a friend that is sick you're in with a friend that is in pain I'm praying for you and for that individual right now I curse the pain I hear it clearly that the pain is gone that pain is gone and Lord we receive this testimony of a body without pain in the name of Jesus you might say my pain is small God can heal a small and a big pain in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that we will focus on the benefit of service, that we will look up to you for our protection and will not drop our assignment because of distraction, of pain, of suffering. In the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for fulfillment that is in our assignment. Father, we thank you for the grace to build others and to add value through our assignment. Lord, I give you thanks in advance for every life that is impacted this morning. We give you the glory. We give you thanks for shifting our destinations, for shifting our mindset, for impacting us with that which we need to make it in 2023. I pray again in the name of Jesus that no one under the sound of my voice will miss it this year, that we will run our race. We will stay in our lane. We will do our assignment. There is something you want us to do. There is some places you want us to go. There is an accomplishment you want to accomplish through us in 2023. Even as we prayed from the beginning, Lord, teach us and guide us into divine enlargement in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 